Welcome back. We are talking to uh, Healer Zolus, or going to talk to Healer Zolus. I'm Lieutenant Commander Data of the Starship Enterprise. I'm investigating the absence of Dr. Hoon Forsh. We haven't talked to him before, I think. Mm, a Starfleet officer. I was expecting this. Her before? Okay, I thought it was a guy. Apparently not. Tracker Malas indicated that you knew of a confrontation between Dr. Hoon Forsh and the constable. Yes, the doctor mentioned it when she asked about Aramit. He's a Ferengi who provides us with alien species for the preserve. Was she inquiring about mistagged animals from his shipment? Yes, she had spoken to Zudan, one of the three watchers in charge of the last shipment. He told her to talk to Aramit. On several occasions, the Watchers requested restricted species and were denied. Is it possible that Aramut was secretly supplying the Watchers with illegal species? Aramut has a rather unsavory reputation. The Watchers wouldn't have anything to do with someone like that. Uh, but you can ask Zudan yourself. Well, Idia seemed to think that the Watchers uh, would easily deal with someone like Aramut. Even though he was the one who uh, recommended Aramut. Did Consultant Idia know of Aramut's reputation when he recommended him for a traitor? Considering how long Idia and Aramut have known each other, I would think so. Those two go back quite a while. I think Idia even came here on Aramut's ship. Okay, getting even more suspicious. Did the other Watchers also tell her to speak to Aramut? I doubt it. The other Watchers were at the quarantine shelter and suffered some kind of neural energy drain when the generators exploded. They've been comatose ever since. Zudan's the only Watcher on duty now. We have found several animals which suffered energy drains. Perhaps we could compare neuroscans to see if the injuries are similar. I'll send you the Watcher's neuroscans. You can view them on the bio table, but I recommend you speak to Watcher Zudan. You can find him at the quarantine shelter. Well, we were just there, and then he wasn't there. Thank you for your time. Mm, certainly. Good luck to you. Idia was the last to see Dr. Hunforsh before she disappeared. Idia is friends with a Ferengi, and Ferengi traders are not known for their honor. Perhaps Idia is guilty. Okay, Worf is doing some more conclusion jumping there, but in this case, maybe he's right. Idia is certainly the most suspicious behaving of everyone, and he has admitted to motive for smuggling. The Watchers suffered an electrical energy drain from their neural pathways, like the Mayacorde Mole. No unusual readings. Hey, you got no voice for this. We have the bio table in court. The watchers suffered an. Okay, there's nothing else I have to say about that. But apparently, when the generators at the quarantine shelter exploded, the watchers were drained in a similar manner as uh, the animals we've seen. And now I'm not an expert, but that doesn't sound like something that would happen when a generator explodes. Maybe something else was going on. Ah, there we go. Watch your Sudan. Sudan is one of three watchers who were responsible for the second shipment of preserve animals. Okay, well, let's talk to uh, him or her. I'm not actually sure what gender this guy is. Speed that up a little. I'm Lieutenant Commander Data of the Starship Enterprise. I'm investigating the absence of Dr. Hoon Forsh. I'm responsible for preserve animals, not Federation scientists. Okay, so this one was a guy. Apparently I had uh, Zolus and uh, Sudan mixed up. I understand the doctor spoke to you of her concerns regarding smuggling in the preserve. 
Yes, she came here soon after the outages, ranting away. Imagine, accusing me, when I'm the one who told her about that boar mistagging. Okay, let's interrogate him. What creature was in this area? A two meter long, 180 kilogram Saltis reptile, which came in on the last shipment. I found the watchers next to its cage the night of the outages. It's still missing. My readings show traces of a tranquilizing agent in its waist. Eremit always doses his animals with neurotranquilizers, just like Idia. We had to feed the reptile intravenously for days. It finally woke up right before the accident, just in time to escape. That's an incredible coincidence. Or was it? These readings share the same ionic residue as samples found near other creatures drained of electrical energy. And this cage is also next to the drain generator. Perhaps the Sultus reptile is a mistagged animal that consumes electrical energy. But there were no reports of it being seen near any of the power outages. And that reptile isn't easy to miss. Unless it's found a way to turn itself invisible, you're going to need another theory. We have encountered several species capable of phasing out of the time continuum and, in effect, becoming invisible. We have also encountered species who consumed human neural energy. The Saltus reptile may be a life form with similar characteristics. Sounds like the kind of creature you wouldn't want to keep as a pet. Well, if you believe so, I suppose it's possible. I have examined the neuroscans of the injured watchers. The electrical energy within their neural pathways has decreased significantly. How could that have happened? I don't know. During my evening rounds, I found them unconscious next to the Saltus reptile cage. I carried them outside the shelter and was going for help when the generators exploded. Okay, so the uh, watchers weren't actually injured by the exploding generator. They were unconscious before that. When did you last see Dr. Hyun Forsh? I haven't seen her for some time. I've been busy recovering animals which escaped during the power outages. It's not easy work. The last time I saw her, I sent her to talk to Aramut. Were you the one who found the carcass? Yes. It died just before the outages, and I wanted her to test it. Why did you not ask consultant idiot to test the carcass? I don't trust him. Always drugging and borrowing animals for his experiments. In the interests of science, he says. I don't know how he could have approved that mistagging in the first place. Do the Watcher Stunners set off the preserve surveillance system? The system only detects signs of distress. Normal sleep does not raise an alarm. Likewise, stunners and neurotranquilizers also don't alert the system. Unlike Idia and Aramit, we prefer stunners. Chemical sedation can be harmful. Consultant Idia mentioned that only watchers can change the ID tags. That's true, but the suppliers tag the animals first. We just match them up with the constable's shipping orders. Idia is responsible for verifying them. Is it true that the Watcher's requests for restricted species were rejected? Only four species out of 112. Of course, we were upset at first, but once the preserve is completed, we can always try again. Thank you for your time. Watch your step now. Well, it sounds to me like uh, the Watchers aren't uh, guilty. And the evidence against Idia is mounting up. Idia persuaded the constable to use Aramut. And Idia is also capable of verifying mistagged species. And he had the neurotranquilizers to knock out Dr. Hun Forsch if she posed a threat to him. Only stunners or drugs could disable someone without setting off the surveillance systems. 
Idia has a supply of neurotranquilizers. I guess the game was afraid that you might figure it out on your own. That's why it's just telling it to you now. And I'm gonna save here. Idiot guilty. And I'll see you in the next video.